Now, I called State Farm because I was curious, is this check coming to me? Uh, so I called them. I said, where was the check sent to? And they gave me the Ricada Law Office P.O. Box in Spicer. And I heard that and I went, oh, these three are just kind of hell bent on dying then, aren't they? One of the only things I thought was April must have the self-esteem of a rock. Another win for the toe. Go on, say it. There you go. There we go. Very good. Because I think deep down narcissists like that don't think very highly of themselves. So now he's got this person who's at their absolute lowest, so they're putty in his hands. It's perfect for a guy like him. It really is. The shame that you have brought on yourself, the shame that you have brought on your family. Yeah. Go back there, see what fucking happens. But I have to give her tough love. She's not invited. She is not my bridesmaid anymore. And I, you know what else? She gives a fuck about coming to our wedding. I have no idea. I, I don't, don't think, think she, she cares. Even would I don't. Care. Yeah, I don't think yeah. she cares. Name me one fucking thing in one piece of paper in one legal document that has come out that I haven't told you and was one hundred percent fucking honest about. Hey. How many times do I have to fucking nail it before you fucking sweepers and you fucking Nick defenders look me in the eye and go, you know what? You're batting a thousand so far. There's no reason to believe you're not telling the truth. What she to fucking understand is that I could have that closet filled up so fucking fast it would make her head spin. And I'm like, even in that moment, I went, dude, not the healthiest mindset to be in right now. Blank says, so April is confirmed living back with Nick. Now, this is very interesting. If you watched Misery Loves Company today, I broke a little news. And I think it's news Keanu's going to want to comment on tomorrow, so I won't get too far into it because... I always like having a co-host to bounce these things off of. Otherwise, I'm just screaming at you. And I don't think I want to just scream at you tonight, especially since we have limited time together. Um, I got an email and a notification from my State Farm app. Uh, State Farm let me know that a claim that we have had on April's truck since March 1st, they'd gotten an estimate and they'd sent a check. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Now, here's the interesting, here's another interesting part of it, though. My name is on the check. So I believe they don't let you cash those checks unless you have both of the signatures on it. I'm not sure. It'll be interesting to see. Someone said, well, see how that check went. Maybe someone's going to forge your signature. If that's the case, that is not keeping your nose clean in the eyes of the law. So... I'm going to keep an eye out on that, but I, I also wanted to know, well, wait a minute, should I be expecting like a big check to come to the house? Because, the, you know, my address is the basis of the insurance uh, account, you know, the bundled insurance account. And even though like this month I've removed April from our bundle, this is a claim that took place when she was on the bundle. So it still counts towards this one, whatever. When you hit a deer in Minnesota, there's no deductible anyway. So Fuck it. Um, the other thing is you can pocket the money if you want to. So, like, I think the estimate for this was, like, five grand. And I don't know how much, you know, uh, Peruvian marching powder you can get with five grand. But, you know, maybe it'll keep you in business. Not that that's what I think it would be used for. But you can pocket that shit. Now, I called State Farm because I was curious. Is this check coming to me? Like, am I, am I going to have to communicate with this person again, which I'd rather not, quite frankly. Uh, so I called them. I said, where was the check sent to? And they gave me the Ricada Law Office P.O. Box in Spicer. And I heard that and I went, oh, these three are just kind of hell bent on dying then, aren't they? Just kind of, we're just going to take the nose of the plane and we're just going to drive that fucker all the way into the ground. Just like three addicts living together it's like a 70s sitcom mixed with Tales from the Crypt. You've just got, hey, what a wacky situation. A guy, his cocaine side piece, and his wife, and they can't stand each other. And they're facing felony charges together and can't see their children and can't have them in their own home. You know what they're going to do? They're going to keep the polycule together. They're going to keep sucking and fucking each other. They're going to drink. Maybe they'll do drugs. Who the fuck knows? And they're going to ride the nose of this plane right into the fucking ground. Now, don't get me wrong. It makes for great television. But holy shit, can you make worse decisions? I felt 
so good when I heard that news, and I'll tell you why. Getting out of that situation, I'm ready to now say literally saved my life. I'm ready to now go literally save my life. And that will sound hyperbolic to some people, and that's fine. But it saved my life. Because there was no amount of dragging, kicking, screaming, pleading, making arguments, intervention, anything that was going to stop this. One of us said, this has been way too fucked up. This has cost me way too much. I'm not going to risk you know, my fucking family over this. I'm leaving. And you take the slings and arrows and you take the abuse and then people text you and they go, it's all falling apart, it's terrible, it's a disaster. Well then, you know, there's an old saying my dad used to have. It was God helps those who help themselves. And I'm back to thinking my dad was a wise man because he was right about a lot of things that I turned out to be very wrong about, like choice and partners. Uh, but God helps those who help themselves. God is not going to help you after he reached out a divine hand and that's what they did. Believe me, that pastor reporting this shit was a divine hand of God reaching out to say, change your ways, repent, and ye shall be saved. And what did they do? They spit in the hand of God. They turned back around to their polycule that the whole town has been whispering about. They paid the bond so they can do drugs and drink if they want to. And they've done fuck all to try and help their situation with their children. God helps those who help themselves. God damns those who repeat their mistakes. So the checks go into Spicer. They put the pol the band, after they got out of jail, the band got back together. And the only thing I thought, one of the only things I thought was April must have the self-esteem of a rock at this point. The lack of belief you have to have in yourself to say, you know what I'm worth? Let me tell you what I'm worth. I'm worth being a cocaine and booze side piece to a trust fund kid who's facing felony drug and child neglect charges. That's where your self-esteem is. That is brutally fucked. Brutally fucked. It also says your moral compass is fucking dicked. I said on the show this morning, I said, if she goes back home, if she gets a real job, if she, you know, she gets the name change, turns it all around. Fucking awesome. You can turn your life around. Still young enough to do so. You go back into the polycule and the drug den and all of that shit, it's fucking over. It's fucking over. Somebody's got to go. You, I, I, please, I beg you. Find me a polycule running right now that's doing well and, you know, going strong after a year, two years, three years. There isn't one. There's a reason for that. Society's not as fucking stupid as you think they are, Nick. It always fails. Somebody has got to go. I don't know who. I don't know when. All I know is, <sighs> fuck, this, th I, this, this story is going to get... Really good. Somebody did say in the chat, uh, Johnny Arcade said, being arrested brought them all closer, trauma bonding and a common enemy. Um, this is real. Uh, Kayla's hallway snatch wrote, <laughs> wrote something really good. April over there means that the case against Nick is super solid and Nick dangled the coke covered carrot to April so all three of them can synchronize their stories for any future trial or questioning. If you don't think Nick is playing godfather over this whole thing, He's not even letting Kayla get a fucking lawyer. She filed her papers uh, for the judge motion pro se, which means no attorney. So, because I'll tell you why. Because if she got, like, my attorney or th that person's attorney or this attorney, basically any attorney that's not her retarded husband, he would say, hey, do you miss your fucking kids? Yes, I miss my kids more than anything. I just want to see my children. All right, here's what we do. We go to the Candy, Ohio County Police Station. We talk to them. We talk to CPS. We go, what path can I get on so that I can see my children again? Because the state of Minnesota does not want to lock a mother of five up for blow. They do not want to. They want to put her in what's called a diversion program. And any lawyer that's not a fucking dipshit would know this. They want to put her in rehab. They want to put her in recovery. 
They want to give her a mild probationary sentence. They want her to work with CPS for a year or two and get your kids back. Supervision for about a year or two and then home free. But you got Nick's lording over the whole thing and he's got to keep both of those. He's got to keep both of his bitches in check lest they might rat on him. <sighs> and, and you know, I, I got to say, I, I hate to be this guy. It makes me look fucking smart by comparison. Oh boy, does it make me look like a fucking genius. I look like F. Lee fucking Bailey. And I, believe me, I've made my mistakes. I've run my fucking mouth like this. But boy, do I look like Johnny fucking Cochran compared to this guy. <sighs> boy, best of luck, kids. Best of luck. Uh, there's something they say in, uh, in recovery, which is your best thinking got you here. I think that's pretty accurate for them. Uh, XMMM says, another win for the toe. Go on, say it. There you go. There we go. Very good. So there you are. Uh, it, it, it's, ugh. it's fucking insane how easy this would be to get taken care of. Pride cometh before the fall is what they say. Uh, Gray Duckling with $5. Here comes the questions. Gray Duckling, $5. Why are you gay? I'm uh, maybe hereditary. I think I've got gays in my family. Yeah, it might be a hereditary thing. Uh, no pen 15 fathead uh, with $2 says, are you circumcised? I said $5 and up. Uh, Rupert 499 says, did Ape have an addictive personality or addictions before this mess? M maybe not an addictive personality, but she was definitely very impressionable and is one of those people who's 50% the person she is and 50% the person she's with. And if she thinks something's cool or someone older than her gives her validation because she's doing a certain thing, she will continue that pattern of behavior. Uh, plus, Nick is preying on the fact that she's pretty much at her lowest point and she thinks she's got nowhere else to go. And he's not like, this is where Gino was like, these people aren't your friends. He's not telling her like, no, 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 you have other places to go. You have options. You can go back to Litchfield. You can rebuild your life from square one, and it won't take that long to get it back. He's happy that she's got low self-esteem, just like I think he's happy that his wife has low self-esteem. Because I think deep down, narcissists like that don't think very highly of themselves. So now he's got this person who's at their absolute lowest, so they're putty in his hands. It's perfect for a guy like him. It really is. Uh, posterior attention with 499 says the pick on the toe boys is crunchy, isn't it? You guys think I'm insulted. You guys think that I'm involved with crunchy in any way, shape or form? No offense. But fucking how dare you? Uh, Pilgrim Media with two bucks says I salute you, sir. Great Kevin show. Thank you. It's always fun. Uh, my lost interest with 199 says, normally the check gets sent to the garage. Uh, no, in Minnesota, they send it right to you. Like you can, in Minnesota, you can get an auto insurance check and you can just deposit it into your bank account and leave your car broken. Like if it'll run, like she's been driving it in the condition it's in. She can take the five grand and just pocket it. And she might because... There ain't no five kids to take care of being a live-in nanny, so there ain't no job. So maybe you keep the five grand. Uh, my Lost Interest also says, meet April at the garage and co-sign the check. I don't, you know, I, I gotta say, guys, I'm just happy to have it all out of my life. I'm just happy to have all that, me like, the fact that it's somebody else's fucking mess, God fucking bless them. I got too much riding on not being involved in that shit. Uh, Gray Duckling with $2 says her initials are AA. Thought it should be NA. Well, they did some boozing over there too when I was there. I remember Nick and Kayla telling me one time, or no, I think it was Kayla, said Nick and I were talking and um, our booze bottles are disappearing really fast around here. And they were kind of hinting toward April. I'm like, eh, have you seen the way your husband drinks? I, I think the Bash brothers are kind of hitting it, you know, 
double. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we, it was comical to me to watch anyone blame just April for booze bottles disappearing. Like if they said, "Hey, you know, you're running out of Minnesota golds quite frequently," I would know who to blame. But like, I don't. I don't know. When you got one guy who's on stream going. <laughs> And you got another woman who's sitting there going, ah, it's still on. Like, it takes two of them to fucking learn how to turn a stream off. So I don't know if one is disappearing the booze bottles quicker than the other. I don't know if that's fair. You know what? I, I am happy with my own uh, life progress, though. I'll tell you that because I heard that news. And when I got that news, I was just like, well, I guess they're all bound and determined to fuck this up and take this ship down to the bottom of the ocean, fucking engines on fire and just steam into the bottom. Just, they're just going to fucking go for it. I don't know, man. If I found myself in this situation, I'd be doing everything that CPS said in order to get my children back. I wouldn't be so arrogant that I'd be like, you know what the most important thing is right now? My pride, my arrogance, my ego in showing that I'm so much fucking smarter than the cops. My thing would be, Holy shit, I've scandalized my children. I've disappointed them as a father. I've been a failure as a fucking parent. How do I turn my fucking life around, clean myself up, and do this the right way? You know, instead of trying to find loopholes so that, that, that I can still have my booze and drug world and my kid world. No, fuckface, you gotta choose. And then for two other people to go along with you in it says a lot about their self-confidence, their self-image, their self-esteem, and their self-worth. Because you follow somebody like, uh, 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 uh. I mean, you can't think too highly of yourself. But you know what the great part is? Not my fucking problem anymore. 383 Novocaine with five bucks says, damn it, if she dropped panties for a V6 Mustang, what would she have done for a ride in a 600 HP Nova? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, there is a, there's an element of status chasing with that girl. I'll tell you that much. There's a lot that I kind of learned in the last six months, if you will. You know, whether it was me from her old boyfriend or this, always, somebody's always got their kind of, uh, their, that Litchfield small town eyeball out for something a little uh, wealthier or so with a few more toys to come around the corner if you catch my drift. Uh, 383 I, Nova. Because as far as you and I were concerned, right? She was at her parents' house. We thought. We hoped. I was, I, I didn't know, but I was hoping. I thought her parents had enough sense to go like, the shame that you have brought on yourself, the shame that you have brought on your family, and the, and the fucking past that you were given. You're coming home. Right. But I, I guess if you can't, and if her parents aren't going to do it, maybe they're giving her tough love too. Good. Go back there. Yeah. Go back there. See what fucking happens. Maybe. That's my just opinion, just from an outsider's perspective. But no, I'm not fucking, I'm not, but you're not going to answer me. And then, oh God, I can't even. Go I ahead. Just can't even, Go I ahead. can't believe she's fucking back there. I can't fucking believe it. And I'm angry because I don't know. I make I hate him more and I love her, but I have to give her tough love. She's not invited. She is not my bridesmaid anymore. If she wants to give me a call and explain herself and get uh sober, I guess. I if that's not important to her and she wants to hang out there at that uh whatever fucking trap house with guns under the bed then I don't want that person at my wedding. I want my April at my wedding, so. Yeah. Is that harsh? I, no, no. I, you know, honestly, I, I, I think, and I've, I've kind of kept my mouth shut because I want people to kind of, like, my experience was so bad that I'm going to poison anyone's opinion if I lean into mine when they're telling their shit. So I've kind of let you navigate this let you i mean it's your thing oh yeah nav well, nav right. and i'm like no but april's such a sweet girl. right and i'm like i'm not gonna tell her what she should or shouldn't do but yeah i think you've been remarkably you've been very nice and very generous and very forgiving and very excusing the entire time and i didn't say anything because i went through something much harsher that clouds my judgment further so i'm not gonna put that dark cloud on you 
You handle right. it the way you handle it. I'll give you the information that I know, and you can right. do with it as you as you like. Right. And I don't mean to be harsh, but yeah, this has been fucking. I, I think it's the best thing for her, honestly. Like, and I, you know what else? She gives a fuck about coming to our wedding. I have no idea. I, I don't, don't think, think she, she cares. Even would I don't. Care. Yeah, I don't think yeah. she cares. If you. Oh, exactly. What did Jean she say? just wants to marry fucking him. It, it's like I act like I'm like, well, you're not invited to our wedding anymore. I don't even think she's like, oh, wait, who are Gino and Keanu? Uh, yeah. Oh, I texted them the other day. I, who knows what she's fucking thinking? I think she would oh, prefer. But, yeah, I, I think she would prefer. This is my just my personal opinion based on where I think she is mentally. Hmm. I think I believe that her and Nick. I, and again, I'm. Bringing this up on a whole cloth, this is just my theory. Have had yeah. conversations where she has said, you know, things like, Kayla's not... I, I know this because April said this to me. Mm -hmm. I don't think Kayla's right for you. I don't think you two are right for each other. I think she wants to be, in her mind that she's in right now, she wants to be with him and would like to push Kayla out of the way i got a text 100 i got a text you from kayla she wants to be in a thruple yeah no i got a text from right. kayla the other day not the other day this was a month over a month ago month and a half can i just say ago. i love gossipy girl day yeah so i get a text from kayla and she says uh because nick used to go through her phone and read kayla and i's messages to each other and he would get incensed and he would get are you very telling me you're not really telling me that Nick used to go through Kayla's phone to read the messages between you and her. Do you know what his excuse when was? When he yeah. uh, kind of pushed you guys together. Yeah. Do you know what his excuse was? He goes, well, it was on the it was on the bed open, so I didn't like it. He always hack has an excuse yeah. for it. Yeah. Right. So Listen, my kids should have changed their own clothes. Yeah. So... Like, but oh, yeah. Kayla either got into his phone or this is even more psychologically fucking abusive behavior from him. The vibe I got from Kayla was he like gave her his phone to read his messages, which is like punishing her. Like, here, read this traumatic shit. Oh, like, that's yeah, fucking weird that. abuse. And then acting like I'm doing a nice thing for you. So she texted me one night and she goes, I just read their texts and saw what they think of me. And it's fucking heartbreaking. And I'm like, Kayla, like, I was thinking to myself, I was like, Kayla, I could have told you what they thought of you. Like, I could have told you what, what they, like, how they saw you. Like, 100%, I could have told you. And, I, and that's kind of the thing. That's what's got me so, um, you know, when I think about it, just like, so this whole thing was fucked. It's just like, the amount of things I said that just went, what the fuck, who gives a shit what you think? Or the amount of times where I went, this, this, and this could happen, or this, this, and this. And then to watch this stuff all happen, it's why I kind of get resentful. And, and I try not I to get... I don't blame you. I don't blame I, you. I, I sort of get it now. Yeah. I'm but, like, like, I try not to get resentful of people on the internet because they don't know the whole story. But when they no, sit there right. and question me, and uh, and this is a bit arrogant, I understand that it's a character flaw, whatever. But when they're like, he's so arrogant, he's so this, he's so that. Name me one fucking thing in one piece of paper, in one legal document that has come out that I haven't told you and was 100% fucking honest about. Hey, how actually, many times, I feel like Gino, how many times do I have to fucking nail it before you fucking sweepers and you fucking Nick defenders look me in the eye and go, you know what? You're batting a thousand so far. There's no reason to believe you're not telling the truth. Actually, I mean... I, I think you could be, you're not being arrogant. I, the other thing is, I think that in my opinion, from an outsider's perspective, when I go back and watch and people have been playing that clip of Nick and April on that first, whatever, simp cast, cast or what yeah. have you. From my opinion, from an outsider's perspective, I think there was a lot more going on than you even want to in, want to even die. Not not that not that you knew. I think that I think that maybe there was a lot more going on before you knew it. It's like let's make him feel like this was his idea. Sure. No, I could see that. You know maybe. what I mean? 
Maybe. And I think you're maybe kind of coming to terms with that. So yes, of course you're kind of butt hurt. And like, <laughs> yeah, well, I was fucking I was fucking hurt too or whatever. It's fine. I'm okay. I was fucking somebody too. Yeah. This was my idea, wasn't it? It yeah. wasn't? Uh, well, no, it wasn't. I don't know, but that's just what it fucking seems like. And yeah. I'm, as your friend, I'm telling you that. And I think you kind of know that too. Like, maybe there were, maybe that. there were DMs and stuff. I will say this: like, we spent so much time together that neither yeah. of us would have had time to do like a secret, sneaky thing. Yes, um, but, but at I the will same say, time, could they have I been? I think it could was maybe talking? in the works before, even though there was nothing physical. I think maybe it might have been in the works before. It's you possible. Were, I look. I've heard from enough women since this thing started, where they're like, and they've asked to remain nameless, so I'm not going to out them or anything. But they've right. sent me messages where like I was on a stream with Nick, and then immediately after the messages start, and it got really kind of weird, and he was. Just, Did you ever know if April was was? W- did you ever, I mean, you would never look there probably. I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, not a fucking psycho. I'm not that guy. I'm just like, and, and that was a, a a thing that there was a glaring chasm growing bet- between Nick and I where we just weren't the same guy. Like when I was in the, the, the throes of the extra relationship, that's what I was consumed in. That's because I thought that's what was the fucking point. I'm like, I'm involved with this person. They're fantastic. I'm spending time with them, blah, blah, blah. But with him, he but always Aaron, had one, he yeah, always, but Aaron, he always had seemed- one eye on his thing and then one eye on what I'm doing. And I'm like, dude, I got to tell you, I'm not watching you. I don't give a fuck. Like, especially as I'm watching, like you're talking about that clip from fucking February where uh, Mickey said April looks strung out. Um, I'm imagine me. I'm watching this happen to this person. And, and as I try to confront it, I get yelled at and called a terrible person. Why wouldn't I gravitate more towards Kayla and spend more time oh, with her? Oh, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Of course. No, you didn't I, do no wait, wrong. wait, I did right, things yeah. wrong. I 100 well, I scandalized my marriage and all this other shit. But, and, um, but, but, but you're the only one in the situation, and I know you dabbled in the, the, D, D, the DR. A little, GS, yeah. Right, a little bit, right? But you're the only one in the situation who wasn't a, like a full blown addict. Right, right. So. And so, the more that you say to an addict, they do crazy shit. Yeah. I'm not an addict. The moment she got out of jail, our poor April, I'm not an addict. Someone else did this to me. She wasn't talking about Nick. Right. She's talking about you. Talking about me. Somehow. And by the way, I'd been gone for a month and a half. You can't put that shit on me, sister. I, I went like this. I went, all right, if I'm the problem, let me be the problem, and the problem will remove itself. And apparently it all got way fucking worse. And how dare you yeah. lead my wife on? God. Lied to my, you lied to my wife and I. So yeah. Yeah, it, well, whatever. I, they it, all need a they all need a fucking uh, a rude awakening. Well, it's I, coming. I they would have I'm telling him. you this right now. He's leading them right to prison. Literally. He's leading, he's walking them through the front door of the prison. And I'm telling you, Kayla could get her kids back if she did all the right things and made all the right moves, but she's going to let they, that fucking they lunatic have fight him them. represent them as a lawyer. Well, they won't let that happen. Uh, RB at Matt Fry with 499 says, if nothing changes, you'll be reading an obit from Spicer real soon. Don't think I haven't thought about it. I mean, first of I all, I thought of that's that was my main concern. I thought best thing that could have happened was that they got arrested. Yeah. At least she didn't fucking overdose or something. I don't even think it could be drug related. When you've got a three person polycule and one woman clearly wants to take what the other woman has, which I believe April wants to take what Kayla has. I believe mm-hmm. that wholeheartedly. The April that we know now, um, she wants to take what Kayla has. Um, I don't see a mother of five who's got this life for herself just letting that go. So I'm not saying that anything lifetime is going to happen, but if it did, I wouldn't sit here and go, oh my God, I'm shocked. I can't believe it. Oh my God. It's not even what I, I was thinking more like drug related. You're thinking Maybe. like, yeah. I'm I'm thinking, no, I'm, I'm thinking someone could do something. It, you got to remember the fucking situation we're in here. 
Like you can't do these things. And I know from experience now, you can't do these things without feelings and emotions getting involved. I know everybody thinks they can. It's fucking impossible. No, some of those drugs that those people may have been on allegedly might not be able, they may not be able to have... It, you Let, can't get just, hard if you're on blow. Let, let's just say a this. lot of the time, right? I, I so will, maybe they were just right. I, so. I will say this. Let's say in this fantasy situation we're talking about that never actually existed. Um, right. This is totally this situation right. we're talking about that's hypothetical. Fantastical, let's just let's yes. just say one of the four or two of the four were accused of being physical too much too often because the other two were not being as physical as much as I often. I wonder why the other two weren't. And then, Aaron. well, let's just say that maybe the female in the other group was the one being blamed for why the other two weren't being as physical, that it was actually the other woman's fault that for some fucking reason, and maybe they that those two people sat one of uh, the other two down and berated them about this fact... In this mock fantasy situation we're talking about. That, that never, sounds yeah. insane, that but it sounds like the crazy. other two that weren't being as physical, um, and, you know, from what I know, in just this, like, hypothetical situation, um, I think that the person that does maybe the more cocaine can't get uh, their dick hard. And uh, so probably that might be why that is a side they may effect, have an yeah. apparatus like a baldo or something. But even that doesn't work. And then you know it, it might. I don't know. Maybe they just were. Maybe the 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 poor woman in that situation hypothetically might have been less satisfied, but was still so enamored by. If I hypothetically had a package somewhere as a receipt. Um, if I had a package with this person's name on with with one of these hypothetical non-existent person's names on it that mm -hmm. gave you a milligram count of something they may have used to counteract the effects of a maybe a certain mm -hmm. substance, could I go grab that real quick and tell you how many milligrams yeah. that may have been? Give me absolutely. Give me one moment, and then we'll catch up with all your guys' super chats. Hold on one second. We'll talk to you to counter effect the effects of anything that might be going on hypothetically 80 fucking milligrams uh, wow. uh, let me let me tell you guys what a blue chew is oh six oh. i've heard good things you know a blue know. chew is six uh keanu i've got uh I'm not even doing a bit now. This is kind of, this is tragic news. This is an eyewitness account, and this checks out because last Thursday, I put the rest of April's stuff out in the driveway, and she came and picked it up. We didn't want to see You're, each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, we didn't want to oh. see, we didn't want to see each other, but I also, in the state she's in, I didn't want to be away from the house when she came over. I don't know what's going to happen. She had taken money out of the account. She had done all this stuff, so I'm like, I, 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 wanna, I don't want to see her, but I'd like to be here. You when, just took everything and put it in the driveway? And I put it in the driveway because I didn't even want her going in the garage. Smart. So Smart. she went to pick that up uh, at about, she probably left at about 9, 9.30. So this actually, this is terrible. This checks out. At uh, night? Yeah. A listener writing in says, you can read this live. I was going to keep it to myself. I saw April at a local gas station in Waite Park last week, Thursday at 10.30 at night. So this, I mean, she was in town. She looked worse than her mugshot and strung out as fuck. She had a nasty bun that looked like a rat's nest and was dressed poorly. The truck also looked trashy, and she drove back towards Wilmer. Just another example of her being on the wrong path. I hate that this happened, but it needed to be said. I, dude, I'm it's at the point very now. Very unfortunate. I can't believe she's fucking back at that point. Like, but I'm at the point now where I don't know. Do I call the fucking detective? Like who gave me his card? And you can't do anything. You are a, a I, human being with three kids. You have to think about yourself. You're divorced from her. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'm fucking, I mean, yeah, I'm out and I'm doing very well. Um, there's nothing you can't save her from. No, I mean like. You know, if she's active for like, look, people aren't wrong when they see someone and they go, they look like they're using drugs. I mean, they're usually not wrong. 
I mean, that's there's a look. Oh, you mean to like, okay. When he says she hug. looks strung out and all this other stuff. If she's, okay, in it, my he says, opinion. When he says yeah. she looked worse than her mug shot and strung out as fuck, I mean, people don't just pull that out of their asshole. Yeah, I'm sure, right. Happy but... Pride Month. He said, pull it out of there. I hear you. Well, also, polygamy is part of LGBTQ+. So there is that. It's okay. Well, that's we a, didn't mind. That's a, Did we? that's a fucking bummer right there. It, that's horrible. Yeah. You can't do anything about it. I will tell you, uh, in my opinion, Why would she go back there if she had any intention of um, getting, I guess, I may just be talking about alcohol. I don't know. I mean, I mean this right. is an outside perspective. Yeah. Clean. If you wanted to go get clean, you'd have your mom and dad, who don't live that far away, pick you up from jail and keep you there. But no. Yeah. I highly doubt they're all getting clean together. I don't know. No. I mean, if she, I mean, strung out is a look. And if, yeah, I, I mean, God, but can you be that fucking stupid to go reload on fucking drugs when you're facing felony charges? I guess people That's say. That's why it's so incense. That's why it incenses me so much. But I understand it. And that's why I've taken up for April so much because I'm like, this isn't her. Not in a right fucking mind. And there's one person controlling the entire fucking situation. And the other people have autonomy over their lives. They're 100% humans that can walk away from it. It sometimes can just be difficult. And that's just my opinion from an well, outsider. Well, and that's the, that's the thing. Like, the world gets so small when you do that kind of stuff. Because you have to remember, like, we still have thousands of fans of this show that were fans of the radio show. So they live in St. Cloud, Wilmer. Yeah, of course she goes to the gas like, station and she's like, they're like, ooh. Yeah, Wilmer, Spicer, Richmond, like all the towns up and down between this town and that one. Like I still go to, pl when, when I would drive to their house, I would stop at places like gas stations and things like that. They go, oh, hey, Aaron, love the show. Like you're going to run into people who know who you are so that if you don't want people to see you in that state, and then report it to people, you're going to have to stay in more. You're going to have I, to become more know. secluded. That, like that, the trap closes in on you without you even knowing it. And, and eventually you're just in a little cage. Well, I wouldn't want anybody to see me in the state of Minnesota either, but I'm just kidding. I'm trying to make you laugh. <laughs> I get it. The state of Minnesota. In that state. If that person reached out to you, I don't think they're lying. It doesn't seem like some troll. No. They're, they're saying, Oh, no, that's like, a guy. Uh, look, yeah. that's a guy who's been a fan of this show for a long time. He loved April. Like, he, he was a, a big fan. So, one of the, right, one of the people who is taking care of the kids um, did tell me, and this was heartbreaking when I spoke to them. Again, this was like the day after the arrest or two days after. Um, they said, the kids are okay. The kids are happy. And they're like, we, but, yay, but, someone's well, feeding us. But they Great. did say, but they did say the kids know what happened. And from the youngest to the oldest, they know what happened. And one of them said, mommy and daddy are in jail. And I was like, oh, fuck. That really sucks. I don't know the kids, so I don't have that sort of like sadness for them i'm sure yeah. you maybe are like uh, wow i'm also removed so i'm like trying not to be like oh you know this and that it's just like it's sad to hear no matter who it is do you want to know what it makes me feel like uh it makes me feel like you know what could have happened a little bit um less traumatizing if you didn't uh throw the um search warrant to the ground and beg and them let them battering them. ram the door in well, and then why don't you think about your kids every once in a while, homie? That's all. You know what would have been thinking about your kids is fucking not buying drugs when you got five kids in the fucking first place. And you know the other thing is oh, a hundred percent, right? Yeah, like I, uh, you know, I've told this story before, and I'll tell it again. Uh, Kayla told me she goes, "When we run out, we're not going to reload." And she said they ran out, and April, she, they, again, this is Kayla. 
said April threw a fit and said she was going to go herself and get it. And then Nick said, well, I can't let her go down there alone, so I'll just go with her. And Kayla fought with, she said, I fought with Nick about not going. Yeah, she but doesn't that's know just it is. what she's telling that's you. That's just what though. she's, again, this is yeah. what I got from a, another party secondhand. So this, I, I can't confirm them. this information. I said we didn't want to reload on the drugs, the children. Like, another win for the toe. Another win for the toe, right. But she's like, but then April was going to go and meet the dealer by herself. But then the. But she could be know, lying. Yeah. Right. I mean, 100% she could be fucking lying. Or else April's that. I don't know. There was no way they were going to stop, obviously. She's just telling you that, or maybe she's telling the truth, but, like, there wasn't any way that there weren't going to be drugs in the house, apparently, so. Well, do you want to hear when I was in the throes of, like, like, uh, Kayla had come over to my house after April had cleared, like, the the clothes out of the closet, and uh, Kayla came over, and we were talking up in my room, and I may have been a little overcome with emotion. And you know when you're overcome with emotion, you're both sad and angry and defiant at the same time? Um, this Ain't is a really... Or what? No, no, this is a really unhealthy way to live. But she was, like, comforting me, and I pointed to the closet, and I go, you understand, historically, like, meaning, like, I'm talking about how I've jumped from relationship to relationship. I go... What she didn't fucking understand is that I could have that closet filled up so fucking fast it would make her head spin. And I'm like, even in that moment, I went, dude, not the healthiest mindset to be in right now. It's a horrible mindset. It's a horrible. That's like, you, though. I'm going to spite. Mindset. I'm yeah, going to spite Bob Phil. Levy. You're like Elizabeth Taylor. I'm going to spite Divorce Phil. Divorce as many times as you're married. You leave nothing but well wishes behind. Like, come on. I. You can't. I, no. Look. I've definitely moved on from that mindset. 